A large group of migrants is waiting for answers right now at our border with Mexico. Tomorrow marks two weeks since Title 42 ended, reshaping American immigration and drawing attention to the ever-growing border issue. We sent CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes to the border to give us an update. She joins us live right now with details. Kirsten. Yeah, we are live here at the San Ysidro Port of Entry. If you take a look behind me, you can see the bridge and the fencing. On the other side of all of that stands another group of about 100 migrants looking for asylum in the United States. Activists and people seeking asylum here in our country tell us that, yes, Title 42 has ended, but not the conditions that push people to our border for help. Three days. Three days. Three days. In Mexico, 45 days. Well, they tell me maybe you wait, maybe we can go inside. That's what Sultan and Fallon Dunn, both from Kyrgyzstan, say as they wait at the U.S.-Mexico border in Tijuana. Nearly two weeks after Title 42 expired and Title 8 kicked in, the number of border crossings are lower than originally projected. Pedro Rios is a human rights activist with the American Friends Service Committee. He says Border Patrol is... Ensuring that people are picked up and not having to... Uh, being forced to wait in areas that are just inhospitable and and uh, could endanger their lives. Approaches 133 people here waiting to attempt uh, apply uh, asylum apply. Yeah. Enrique Lucero is Tijuana's municipal director of migrant assistance. The problem is 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 uh, a less appointment because the demand is so bigger. One person who didn't want their face shown on camera told us through a translator app. The queue moves very slowly. We would really like it if the officers were able to launch more people and we would pass faster, would not freeze and would not sleep on the ground and would not eat on concrete steps. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas says Title VIII is working because it has legal pathways to asylum and more punitive measures for unlawful crossings. Migrants must now prove they were first denied asylum in a country they passed through on their way to the United States or they could face criminal prosecution, detention, and a five-year ban from re-entering. Rio says the person seeking asylum and gains entry to the United States doesn't fare better than the person who was detained at the border because they did not meet Title VIII requirements. Both are extremely difficult to uh, obtain a, a positive notification of, both, of either uh, receiving asylum or remaining in the U.S. and not being deported. out to Customs and Border Protection for comment on this story. We still have not heard back, but the migrants we talked to today at our border right now come from Honduras, Venezuela, and Middle Eastern countries. Reporting live for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Kirsten, we've been reporting on this for the last few weeks now, and a lot of what these migrants are saying is that the process is very confusing. So what are officials telling them? What's the best way to start the legal entry process into the U.S.? The best way officials are telling us to start that process is by going through the CBP app. A lot of people have been complaining about the app, but they are working out those problems. Start with the app and officials are trying to solve those problems as they arise. All right, Kirsten reporting live for us tonight. Thank you so much.